there were two XB70s built only to be used for test. And they were extremely effective. Uh, they went three times the speed of sound, flew nearly uh, to 80,000 feet, and the test program was very successful. Uh, unfortunately, there was an accident in 1966 that had nothing to do with the test. It was a, uh, an air-to-air -air collision. So, but the test program was extremely successful. And everything about the XB-70 is exotic. Every single thing about the XB-70. It uh, had wingtips that drooped down to take advantage of something called compression lift. And basically the idea is the XB-70 at supersonic speed is creating these shock waves. And engineers figured out a way to harness those shock waves so that the XB-70 actually rides on those shock waves. And it generates additional lift. And the wingtips, which were alone as large as the wings on an aircraft, a smaller aircraft, would droop down and help contain that compression uh, and take advantage of the compression lift. There was a large move in 2002, and uh, the existing galleries were created, the Cold War Gallery, World War II Gallery, Korean War Gallery, and so forth. And the idea was to move all of the aircraft that were research and development, move them together in one place. And unfortunately, that place was on the guarded side of the base. But the idea was that when the next building was built, that then they would all move together as one unit over to the new building, rather than tear apart galleries pulling R&D airplanes out of this one and that one, they would all come over here together. So to see the conclusion of that plan, uh, the vision that was imagined 15 years ago, to see them uh, come over here together and see the XB-70 move back is really very wonderful. Uh, many of us have been waiting about 15 years for this to happen, so it's exciting. Another part of the XB-70 were its advanced engines. Uh, they were test engines, they were not production engines. In fact, there were only about 30 or so J-93 engines built. It used a special fuel, JP-6. And the thrust of a J-93, one of these engines on the XB-70, is equivalent to the thrust on a frontline advanced fighter flying today. We've been very fortunate to be able to see some of these aircraft moving in and see this gallery beginning to form. Uh, we're very excited when we'll be able to show the public in uh, 2016 and uh, they'll be able to see the Research and Development Gallery, the Space Gallery, the Presidential Gallery, and the Global Reach Gallery. And uh, the staff here is working feverishly to get to that date and so the public can finally see these wonderful artifacts on display. I think it's I think it's absolutely wonderful that that uh, as you say as generations uh, as young kids can come in look at the airplane and see what what kind of tools were used to develop and get us to where we are today uh, I think that's just priceless to have to have a machine like this in a museum so every every flight you wanted to bring your a game when you crawled in the cockpit uh, even my first flight was just exciting as heck it, uh, this could be 
But uh, things happened so fast that you really didn't have time to get scared. <laughs>